All right, guys, this is uh, my second video, I guess, in my series uh, as I tackle the brakes on my 1991 5.6 CSEC. The first video, I've really focused on the rear brakes on the car, specifically the brake shoes and uh, some tips and tricks on installing the shoes with their, with their tricky springs. And there's a couple of details I wanted to add to that video on this video, specifically related to um, setting the tension on the parking brake cables. Um, once you install the self-adjuster, which sits back here, I actually have everything bolted back in place, so unfortunately you can't see it. But the self-adjuster, which sits at the top between both sides of the brake shoes, make sure you orient that adjuster properly. I say that because I've seen guys who accidentally reverse the orientation and the adjusting wheel needs to be facing forward. So make sure that you, on both sides, left and right, so make sure you have that wheel facing the right direction. And that way, once you pull that, or once you set the, key, the parking brake, it's actually gonna self-adjust over time and give you th that constant four clicks as thereabouts to engage the uh, shoes on the inside of the rotor. So that's the first thing. The second thing to some tips regarding in, um, setting the tension on the cables. If the rotor is, is really easy to go on a bit loose, then the the shoes are not well adjusted and then if you set the parking brake inside the car the pedal will go to the floor so the thing to do is keep turning that star adjuster up here um, until the rotor has some drag against those shoes when once it's going on and once you slide it on if you have too much tension then the rotor will not slip over those shoes. So that's how you know you have it perfectly adjusted. It's a bit of trial and error, um, but once you, you can feel that drag and friction, once you slide that rotor over the shoes, then you know it's perfect. You get about four-ish clicks. Once you set the parking brake inside the car, and you'll be good to go. So just two points I wanted to further mention to you guys. Um, you can see I have everything bolted back up, new rotor, new pads, Newly rebuilt caliper. Um, my stainless steel line is all installed and I'm ready to go on the rear, so all done. Turning my attention to the front now, it's quite involved. Um, let me walk you through some things there. Um, on the front, removing the caliper is simple. It's two 19 millimeter bolts, which are back here on the hub. Simple, I use a half inch breaker. Uh, and then the caliper will come loose. If it doesn't come loose, you can pry it off the rotor using large flat edge screwdriver and a hammer. Just gently knock um, this guy in, wedge it in between the top of the caliper where there's an opening against the rotor, and then it'll eventually come, come loose. Uh, on my car, both the left and right were, were a bit stubborn to remove, and I think it's because the pistons have a little bit of corrosion and, and stuff built up inside the housing. So making the, the retraction of those pads not as good as they should be. So they were a little bit of work to remove those calipers. Once the caliper is off, um, I always have a little bucket or paint can I can rest it on. And then I remove the actual um, brake line. It's an 11 mil millimeter on top and a 14 below. Make sure and use Flare wrenches, guys. If you use regular open-ended wrenches, you will damage uh, those fittings and you'll be pretty upset with yourself. So flare wrenches, please invest in a set. Uh, at the same time, remove the bracket for the pad sensors, which is this guy. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it in on the back side or the top of the caliper, pretty simple. And you can put it off to the side and then you remove the two sensors that actually fit inside that housing. After that's done, then the grease cap. The grease cap comes off, same deal. Just use your flat edge screwdriver and a hammer. There's a groove in the cap, which is right here. And you just place your uh, screwdriver in that groove and knock around the, uh, the actual cap and it'll break free. It's, it's a tight fit, friction fit. So a few knocks and it'll come off without getting damaged. Don't use channel locks because you will damage it. 
Um, and then the, the copper retainer, which is right here, sits right at the end of the spindle. You just pull that out very carefully. You can buy these brand new, so they're not expensive if you happen to break it. And uh, once that's off, just kind of keep it. I, I kept mine inside the grease cap here to keep it all together. Um, after that, then you have to remove the retaining nut. And uh, it's a five millimeter Allen um, on a 3 8 drive to remove that bolt. That'll come free without any problem. And then I use a crescent wrench to remove it. There's not a lot of uh, effort required to remove this guy. It's very simple to back out. So uh, very simple. Once this is out, the entire hub um, with the rotor will come off as one big piece. So it's pretty heavy, so be ready for it. It shouldn't fall into your lap or anything like that, but just be ready for it. And uh, then you have to separate the, the hub or bearing carrier, whatever you want to call it, from the actual rotor. And the way to do that, guys, the only way to do that is with this guy. Um, I use my uh, half inch uh, Allen impact um, with, uh, with my impact gun and uh, it will break those bolts free without any problem whatsoever and you have to use this if you try using just a, uh, a half inch breaker bar I'm putting this say in a vise you will probably damage these allen head bolts and uh, then you're really uh, your your only choice at that point is to use a lot of heat and maybe cut them out. So the hammer action of the impact is what will break them free. These are really big stout bolts, and there's a lot of heat and uh, and um, some moisture that'll get in there, as well as the fact that uh, Mercedes uses Loctite on these. So an impact is definitely what you need to. To break this free once you have it all broken free what i do is i put pieces of two by sixes on the back side of the uh, rotor here and that way i i tap on the loosened bolts with a hammer a small sledge and then an extension on each one of the bolt heads and that'll actually push the uh, bearing carrier the hub towards the ground uh, without it hitting the ground and damaging it, the bolts will of course, of course catch it. And then uh, after that, you can just slide the whole. You can pull the bolts out, and the whole thing will slide out. And uh, and then you can see the two pieces separate.